this is Scott from Optics Realm. It's November 2012. This is going to be optics, my optics tutorial number seven. We're going to talk about field of view, F number, focal length, and uh, clear up some loose ends with windows uh, in, a, in a converging wavefront. Again, the goal is to define field of view, focal length, uh, F number, and understand what happens when a window is put in a converging wavefront. What is focal length? Let's take a simple lens here where we've got a collimated beam. So collimated, your object's infinitely far away, and it's got some height. So the chief ray is coming in at an angle. Recall, uh, chief ray goes through the center of your aperture stop. In this case, it's a simple lens. The aperture stop is the lens. So the angle of this chief ray on the input is essentially equal to the angle on the output. Uh, similar triangles there. So when you have an object at infinity with some height, it's going to map, so we've got angle, that's going to map to an image height on your detector plane, some image h. Focal length is simply a scale factor to go from that object angle to your image height. So h equals f tangent theta. Uh, this isn't necessarily the case when you get distortion, that's a complicated aberration. We will cover that in a later tutorial session. Let's look at a thick lens focal length. Most of the focal lengths we've gone over have included just the simple radius of curvature of the front and the back. It's not included, my past tutorials have not included the thickness T of the lens. So if the lens is thick, it's going to have some thickness T here. And if it's got that thickness, you've got to include this ratio of index of refraction of the lens. That's what n is. n is the index. Divided by the two radius of curvature. And if you prefer to work in terms of curvature, which is 1 over radius of curvature, that's given in this second equation here in terms of c's. And we need to pay attention to the uh, radius of curvature signs. If the center of curvature is to the right of the surface, then the curvature is positive. If the center of curvature is to the left, the curvature is negative. You can have a zero power thick lens. And how does that happen? Focal length is, um, well, power is 1 over the focal length. So the power is zero, meaning you have an infinitely long F number. If you set this equation, this thick lens equation, to zero, and solve, you see the, the difference between the front and the back ra radius of curvature have to be equal to index minus 1 divided by the index times the, times the thickness of the lens. And uh, Rick Jurgens likes to put this little cartoon here uh, of Superman, help, I'm losing power. So you have a lens, the rays come in collimated, they come out collimated, that's a focal, parallel in, parallel out but it's not a unity magnification. In other words, this ray height is smaller than this ray height for all intents and purposes. If you round, it's going to have a magnification of one, but it's not exactly uh, unity magnification. And you can have aberrations in this lens. Let's talk about focal length for a complicated system. And the key point here is your focal length of your lens does not equal the back focal distance. So if you take some big, huge, complicated lens, like your camera lens, and you cannot assume that the focal length is the, the distance from the last element to where the image is formed. In fact, very often that is not the case. How do you find what the focal length is? Well, let's look at this telephoto lens. Telephoto lens, you have a focal length that's longer than the lens, usually. The blue rays show the, the ray trace here. And You've got a marginal ray that comes in a semi-height of y sub 1. It goes through the system, and it's going to come down and focus at some image. To find the focal length, you take this, this aft marginal ray, and you project it forward until it intercepts the incoming marginal ray. And then that distance is your focal length. So again, focal length is marginal ray entrance semi-height divided by the exit marginal ray angle. Very simple, very straightforward. If you don't know what's going on in your lens, you don't know what's in there, you can run this simple, you know, uh, either on a nodal slide or with white cards and an image, uh, and, um, 
light sources, you can get a quick idea for what the focal length of the lens actually is. Let's look at an inverse telephoto. Inverse telephoto, the focal length is much, much shorter than the length of the entire lens. In this case, we have to project the marginal, the entrance marginal ray forward until it intercepts this aft marginal ray. So this, in this case, in an inverse telephoto, the focal length is even shorter than the back focal distance. Back focal distance being the distance from the lens, the last surface in the lens, to the image plane. Let's define F number. The F number is related to the half angle of the on-axis light bundle for a focused image. The easiest way to see F number is the focal length, this focal length, divided by the entrance pupil diameter, or entrance pupil D, simply F on D. Some people like to use, instead of F number, they like to use numerical aperture, NA, which is essentially the sign of this, of this half angle here. Microscopists love this because they're looking at, you know, a cell or some minuscule object here. They prefer to work in terms of NA. And the NA is simply the sign of this half angle here. The F number is related to the NA. They're inversely related to each other with a factor of a half. And that does, that can break down for fast beams. I shouldn't use fast beams because we describe what that is here. F number, again, focal length divided by the entrance pupil diameter. Very important concept in optic. The irradiance on your image plane, which is power per unit area, or power density, how many photons per square centimeter. The, at the image plane, it's, it's inversely proportional to the square of the F number. So your irradiance, I, is equal to pi divided by 4 divided by your F number square. Now, people will refer to F numbers in terms of fast and slow, and it's kind of a weird nomenclature if you're not a photographer. This terminology comes from photography. A slow F number is a large number, like F16. In that case, you're not gathering a lot of light, so your exposure has to be longer. It's a very slow process to take a picture. As opposed to a fast F number, with a smaller F number, a fast F number is a small F number, like F1.4. In this case, you're getting a lot of photons in real quick. You've got an action shot or something's moving. You need to get the picture taken quickly. A lot of system optical computations depend on F number. Depth of focus, a lot of aberrations, diffraction image, uh, diffract diffracted image diameter, things like that. F number is very important. Let's talk about working F number. Let me step back here. This F number, what people mostly talk about, can also be referred to as an infinite F number, meaning the object is coming from infinity, as opposed to the working F number. What is the working F number? The infinite F number is the dotted tan lines here. You're coming, this F cone right here is your infinite because it's coming an object from infinity. Let us suppose we do not have an object at infinity. We've got some finite object. It's at a distance s away from your lens, and it's going to make an image s prime away. Now, the cone with the solid red beam is going to be slower than the infinite beam, the dotted um, tan. So your magnification is the ratio of your image, your image height to object height, or your image distance divided by your object distance. For a simple lens, and in, it's going to invert, so your sign is going to change. So for instance, you have uh, an erect object, it gets imaged with a negative sign. So your magnification in this case is negative. If you have an intermediate image, which we'll be going into this later, if you have an intermediate image and your magnification isn't isn't uh, erecting, it doesn't change the orientation, your magnification is positive. So your working F number is equal to your infinite F number times 1 minus M. And again, M is less than 0 if the image is inverted. So a quick loose end I just wanted to cover. Let's put a window in a converging wavefront or a plane parallel plate in a converging wavefront. What is it going to do? You don't change any of the first order properties of the beam. 
you simply move where the image is going to be placed along the optical axis. So for instance, the dotted rays here show where the image would be formed without the window in place. If you stick the window in place, it's going to move the image aft a little bit, some distance D. Now look, the, the rays are parallel here. It's just your image is shifted. This distance D is proportional to the index of the glass and the thickness of the lens, this ratio here, n minus 1 divided by n times the thickness. Here's the homework. I'm not going to go over it in detail, but I would like to point you to a resource. Question 2, I ask you to find the angular field of view for a 100 millimeter focal length lens with a 2 thirds inch detector. Now, this 2 thirds inch detector, you could just simply, for sake of argument, use 2 thirds of an image diameter. Really, though, this 2 thirds inch detector is a format that and you can find them in this wiki, uh, Wikipedia entry, image sensor format. This goes over a lot of the different imaging sizes for film and electronic detectors. If you scroll down, it gives these common, what Kodak and Nikon and Canon, what these common image formats are, as well as a table. So in this case, we look at two-thirds inch, and you see that the diagonal is actually 11 millimeters. It's not two-thirds of an inch. It's, it's close, but it's 11 millimeters. You can contact us. You can find us on the web at opticsrealm.com. My Gmail address is here. I have a Twitter account. We've not been using it extensively. Haven't really adopted that technology yet. We're on iTunes. A buddy of mine, Ed, is answering the questions and posting these up, up there. I've been getting a lot of feedback, a lot of hits, a lot of subscribers. I really appreciate that. A lot of questions, a lot of suggestions. And the suggestions are real advanced topics, and I'll get there slowly. I'm, I'm really excited to get there and talk about some more of this stuff. But I need to build slowly and make sure we all have a common base from which we're, we're starting from. Thank you, and have a great day.